In this presentation, we're going to look at the design of a steel truss bridge to the Ashto code. Now, I already have a number of load cases. Here, you can see I've got gravity for dead load. I've got deck loading and train loading. Now, I could set these active by right click, set active, but I can also do it by dragging the load case onto the screen here. Now, under the utilities tab, I have a number of set views. One of these is to look at the loading, so I'm going to drag that onto the screen. And there you can see my train loading on my structure. Now if I go to the Attributes tab, I can double click here and you can see I've got a Rima train and it's the E70 that I'm looking at. Okay, I'm going to look at my other loading, so I'm going to drag on my deck loading and there you can see the deck loading distribution. Now what I've got are some surfaces that are not meshed, but I'm using those for the deck loading. If I go to the Attributes tab, I can go to the deck loading, double click, and here you can see my deck loading. So I've got two way. I've got a number of sub beams, two here, so one, two. Let's change that to three and apply. And you can see I've now got three sub beams and I've got an intensity of 0 0.05 kips per foot squared. Okay, so I can close that down and I can now solve the model. Once I've solved the model, I can start looking at results. Now I've got a save view here that if I drag it on, it will show the contours of axial load on my model. Now to jump between load cases, I can just drag them onto the screen. So let's have a look at dead load. The numbers here change and I could then look at the train load. Now, rather than looking at results for the individual load cases here, I can create a combination. Now, I could do this with basic and smart combinations, but I'm actually going to use a design combination. And I'm going to do that to the Ashto code, so Ashto 7th. And I then categorize the load. So this is going to be the dead load. This is for surfacing. And finally, this is for the live load, the train loading. So if I go next, I can set up the strength class that I want to look at. I'm just going to look at strength class one. And under the advanced tab, you can see the factors for the permanent loads or the variable actions on the structure. Okay, so let's hit finish. And you can see I get my combinations being shown to me here. So I'm going to set active this one. And I'm now looking at the combined factored results on the screen here. Now, rather than looking at just FX, what I want to look at are design results on this structure. Now, I've already set the design code as Ashto 7th. And as well as the design code, if I go to the three ball tab, the attributes, I've design, uh, put on a number of design attributes. Now, the design attributes allow you to classify the class of section, the steel grade, the allowance for bolt holes that you're going to be looking at, and then effectively how the member is restrained, the effective length of the section. Okay, so let's close that down. And I can look at them here. But I've also got a save view that if I drag this on, you'll see the bridge being colored by where those attributes are assigned. So here you can see all the bottom cord members are red. The green is secondary bracing. So it relates to where these attributes have been assigned to the model. Okay, so let's go to the save views, drag them back on my FX load. Now, rather than looking at just contours of force moment, I can now look at contours of design. So I'm going to go to the Ashto checks and I can choose which of the design checks I want to look at. I'm just going to look at the tensile check. And now what I'm seeing is a utilization based on the design code. Now here you can see the maximum is above one. Now if I select this member here and go to design menu, steel frame report member, what this will give me is a design report based on the member that I've selected. Now here you can see the detailed calculations for the check and you can also see it's failing here, it's above one. So the reason that's failing is these bottom cord members are not big enough. So let's go and have a look at those sections. And at the moment, we've got a section there. So I'm just going to increase it a couple of sizes in weight. 
Now when I do this, the design check automatically updates. You can see there it's now below one, but this is using the old results. Because I've made the section heavier, I am gonna reanalyze. And I can then see the updated result if I set active the combination. So it's a slightly different result than I had before, but it is showing me it is passed. I can click on that member and do a full design report again. And now you can see that all the design checks have passed as they're all being shown as green. Okay, I'm just gonna set active another design component here. Rather than looking at the individual checks, I'm gonna set active something called Util Max. And what this will show me is the worst of any of the checks colored onto the screen. And you can see that all the checks are below one. So all the members are working for all the design checks. Now at the moment, I'm looking at that for just a single combination. But here, this is an envelope of all the combinations. So this will show me the worst result of all the combinations graphically on the screen. And you can see that I've got a value of below one for all the results on my structure. Now, as well as looking at the results graphically, such as these colored contour plots, I can also look at them in a tabular form. So print result wizard, and I'm gonna choose the design checks, and I'm going to create a table of all the design checks. So here's my tabular output. Now, all the design checks across the top here, but some of the numbers I'm seeing are quite small. So what I want to do is edit this table, and I'm gonna put in a threshold value, and that threshold value is going to be 0.01. So basically, any numbers smaller than that will be shown as zero. And now you can see I've got more zeros being shown to me in the tabular results. So that concludes this simple presentation on the design of a steel truss bridge.